Hey, this is Matt with Cheap ABS, and uh, today I'm going to show you how to remove a ABS module from a 2005 Audi A6. And I'm going to show you a different way to do it than I have posted on the video previously. On the other videos, I've shown you how to remove the entire unit because I said it wasn't possible to remove the module from the pump without removing the pump from the car. Actually, there is a way to do that, and I'm going to show it to you now, so if you don't have the equipment or the capability to bleed the brake system, this may be an easier and faster way for you to remove the module, because you won't be removing the brake lines to do that. So, to do this job, we only need a couple of tools. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, you're going to need a... Um, an E5 socket, which is basically an inverse torque socket. You can buy something like this off of Amazon or at Harbor Freight. It's a star bit. Um, and you will need a T30 Torx socket or a Torx bit. And you will need a 10 millimeter wrench. And it's always a good idea to have a uh, magnet handy because a lot of the stuff we might be working on might get dropped down into the engine compartment. So the first thing we need to do, it's pretty much like the other video I have, we need to remove the uh, windshield washer reservoir out of the way. And you can see in this car, like so many of these older Audis, this hood strut is actually broken. So I'm just propping this up with a breaker bar. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this, but this is a customer's car, so I don't have any more of these struts, and I'm uh, kind of stuck here. So you can buy a replacement strut off of Amazon for like 20 or 30 bucks. Uh, definitely the safer way to go about doing this. So let's start by removing the single Phillips head screw holding the windshield washer reservoir. I'm, not, I'm sorry, not the windshield washer reservoir. This is the coolant, uh, coolant fluid reservoir. Tank, uh, the coolant um, tank, fill tank. Uh, so we move that screw, and it's held in with a little uh, um, clip here at the back. If you just pull on it, it'll come right off and won't hurt anything. And there is a um, electrical connector that senses how full the coolant tank is um, at the bottom. So let's go ahead and remove this out of the way, and then we can just pretty much take this and set it all the way over here to give us some working room. The next thing we need to do is remove the um, clamp that holds the power steering fluid reservoir on. This is where we're going to need our T30 Torx bit. So it's a simple, it's just held on by uh, uh, one screw here and just break it free and take the screw out and then we can get this um, power steering fluid reservoir out of the way without, without actually having to drain it or anything like that. You can just tuck it to the side. Um, when you're taking this screw off, you can see that this uh, there's a thick washer in between. So we're just about when it's ready to come off, put your fingers on it and hold it so this thing doesn't drop all the way down into uh, the ether and you lose it forever. So we pull this clamp out of the way and we can take the power steering fluid reservoir and put it to the side. And now this is pretty much the exact same as I've shown you how to do before when we're taking the whole unit out. What we're going to do differently this time is there's you can access the, the, this, this uh, ABS control module is held onto the pump with four screws. And you can access the top two screws without a problem. They're right here. But there's two more that you can't see underneath, and there is absolutely no way to get a socket on those because there's no clearance behind there. That's why I said this job wasn't, you weren't able to do it before, which is true. There is no way to do this job with the module as it is sitting right now. So what you have to do is actually loosen it, and we're gonna move this out of the way. These are hard brake lines, you can't bend them, but they do have some play, which is gonna make this possible. Um, so the first thing we wanna do is give us uh, some more room. So this is very 
uh, very thin metal. So we can just bend this, just use a little bit of force, and we can bend this out of the way. And that's going to be important to help us get to some of these screws um, that we couldn't see before. The next thing we want to do is break the, uh, the pump free. And you can see that there are two 10 millimeter nuts holding the uh, pump to its uh, harness um, below. So we want to take these off. So you're going to need your 10 millimeter wrench. And just break these free. And behind the, the uh, nut is a, a washer that has a tendency to fall down into the engine compartment when you're taking it off. So I would recommend not leaving that in there. And as soon as you take the nut off, take this off too. So when you pull the thing up, this thing doesn't fall down. So hang on to both of those. And repeat on the other side. Well, that's, that's why you need the magnet. <laughs> we'll get that nut later. Here is the uh, washer that comes off of it. So now we've taken those retaining nuts off. Um, and before, before we break this loose, let's go ahead and remove the electrical connector uh, harness. Um, it's got a red uh, retaining tab. Pull that up and out and just hang on to it for when you reinstall it. And then it's got a um, a gray uh, snap connector, and um, we have to break this free. It looks like somebody has already actually broken this on this car. So. Usually you can just pull this up, but somebody has managed to uh, break this connector. So yours is going to look a little different from this because hopefully it's not going to be previously destroyed by the previous owner, but there should be a uh, just a simple lever here connecting these two pieces that you can see where it's broken and you can pull that off. Um, that should be pretty self-explanatory. So now the uh, electrical, con electrical connector is free, just tuck that out of the way. 
and this is where the job becomes really different um, because previously I would have you remove every single one of these hydraulic lines uh, and you're going to get brake fluid everywhere and make a mess and have to bleed all the air out but if, uh, if you don't mind stressing these lines a little bit and it shouldn't hurt anything because these are securely tightened down you can pull the unit up, swing it out, and it'll give us access to these screws. So what I want you to do is feel with your hand underneath of the unit. And you should feel a round, uh, a round bump right in the bottom of it. Um, it's, it's not a flat piece of metal underneath. You feel that round bump? What that is is actually part of this hydraulic unit that is pushed down into uh, the harness and it's uh, pressure fitting so it's not gonna come up when you pull on it like that you're gonna have to pull on it a lot and it's not gonna it's not gonna damage anything but you're gonna have to use a lot, lot of force to get this out of there so that's why I want you to feel it so see what we're doing first and then grab the big brake lines not the little ones and yank up on the unit and it should come off um, that one came off easier than they usually do um, and there's the there's a rubber piece underneath that actually fell down in there so when you're pulling up make sure that you keep track of where that rubber grommet is that the thing actually snaps into so I think you can see what we're what the advantage of this is now is that we've loosened it up and given us some play. So now that we've got it free, we can start taking out the um, the E5 screws. So start with the two on the top, the easiest. Once you break them free a little bit, you should be able to screw them the rest of the way out without the wrench. So we ended up dropping uh, the bit and a bunch of other things down in the engine bay um, and had to quit last night and pick it up today. Um, you may notice things look a little bit different, so that's why. Um, just try to be very careful. and. Uh, don't be a dummy like me and drop everything uh, because it's going to be very hard to find um, if you do in this car especially. Um, so where we left off we had uh, broken free the top two screws um, and now we are trying to remove the bottom two ones that were hidden. So to do that we had loosened the pump so we can pull it back a little bit and you just have to feel around down in there to feel where the other screws are and then just break them free with your wrench and this one on the edge you can probably yeah you should be able to see it if you're pulling and pulling the module out and then once you've broken it free just go ahead and screw all four screws off Okay, so now we've removed all four of the screws holding the module on. We've already taken the connector off, so now it's just a matter of pulling the module off the pump. So just hold on to the brake lines and gently, gently wiggle the module free and you'll see that there's 12 solenoids that go on to these uh, valves and just make you want to make sure that they come off smoothly. If there seems to be any that are stuck, don't force it off. You'll have to get some sort of solvent to break it free if they happen to have rusted on there for any reason. But that slides right off and now we have the module removed um, and uh, this is all that you need to send in. Um, notice we haven't disconnected any of the brake lines so when you reinstall it just do the 
opposite of what we did to take it apart and you shouldn't have to bleed the brakes or anything so both of the different methods have their advantages and disadvantages if it's been a few years since you changed your brake fluid you might as well go ahead and take the whole pump off and bleed the brakes the official way to do it or if you just need to get this thing back on the road as soon as possible and don't want to have to go through that trouble this may be a better option so i just wanted to make this video to show you that there was another way to do it uh, any questions go on the website cheap abs and uh, let me know i'll try to help you out